PSG LGD's turn. Surprised he's just not even tangling up right now. He's, he's letting that see. And he's got another 20 seconds. He's like, Yeah, that's 40 HP. <laughs> I don't need a tango yet. Let's look at the blocks of creeps. Okay, I'll tango. All right, you guys were right. Should still just be two for two, as per usual. We'll see. All right, I think. Uh... The battle begins. Oh, it's a tough one. I think I'm going to go for LGD as well. I think I like the draft a little bit better overall. I think they're. You know, still, well, I mean, I guess I haven't seen too much of XM, but it feels like Death Prophet is, uh, as we talked about yesterday for NIP, it's just like this nice direction giving hero. They can take Roche so easily. NIP don't really have the best options for defending the Roche pit either. This isn't one of those like ET games or clockwork games or something where mm -hmm. you're going to have this like permanent vision, even something like Treants or Chen Creeps. They're never really going to know if they're sneaking it. Uh, and with a slider, it just happens so fast that that can be a really good turning point in the mid game for you. No, I, I would agree. Marks, though, um, will have to be like the FY Pango, right? I think it just it just feels easier for LGD with their frontliners can charge at him. DP kind of charges at him. Oh, up nice toss back. Up top. get tossed back. Uh oh, actually some pretty big return damage onto Ace, but he will get that flame guard off. X Nova trying desperately to survive, but first blood could be drawn. Tiny with the final punch will bring her down. Get that bonus gold. And then instantly stocks at TB's bottom. Maybe hoping to uh, catch FY here. Oh, he's going to try and catch the next wave, it looks like, actually. Damn, that was a quick TP. Uh, instantly kill down bottom, grab the wave from my offlaner. What a hero. There you go. Socks are the hero. CM heads right back up to the top lane. So they are going to have a uh, two on two now. So this decision to have the, the CM top and the Morphling bottom, it uh, it comes off a little weird at first because you're like, why is Pango supporting a Morphling in lane? Like, doesn't Morphling need a lot of help? But because they're tri-laning, then the Morph can do uh, pretty fine, just even with a little bit of harassment coming from this Pango. And then Doom, of course, a zero armor hero. So even something as stupid as a melee hero, right-clicking him can be obnoxious at times. Mm -hmm. And then CM also functions really well in any sort of off lane. As she is helping Chalice here. Has another Crystal Nova here if she wants it. A lot of damage being exchanged. Uses the stomp. I don't know if they're going to have it. Ace is going to make it back into the tower, and Chalice will be forced back. That Enfeeble actually doing some work. X Nova now could end up falling again. PPD tanking some creeps. Ace on his way back over. But he'll use the salve, and X Nova will be just fine. Yeah, and the reason I say she functions so well in most off lanes is that she she loves having someone just in between her and playing aggressively. Like she likes having the the slider in between her and the enemies, and she's able to poke and prod and throw double crystal novas. She enables aggression really easily. Whereas when you're in the safe lane, like a lot of time your carry player is just like, no, I'm good. I'm gonna hit creeps. And there you go, Ace. Ace. He wrote a check that his ass couldn't cash there, Trent. Yeah. A bit too far forward, and oh, well, likewise, geez, NIP losing two cores. Very quickly. Oh my. No, two to one. They got the first blood, but LGD have struck back. Let's check in on the mid lane. Lena versus DB. Pretty much a farm fest here, at least until level six has come out. You'd expect that to be a, a relatively boring lane. Yeah. Probably a, a slight edge for the Lena over time, because you imagine the DP is probably faring out a little bit more regen than the, uh, the Lena is. Mm hmm. Yep, definitely. I think Lena probably has more kill potential also. Especially when you hit six. And uh, Sox is trying to help facilitate that here. Only level two, but coming mid. And now he walks into vision, but it's too late for XM. The long walk back from Fada. Can't get the reach, so he has to opt for the creep wave instead. XM. Oh, he sidesteps. Spirit Siphon is going to give him a little bit. He'll be okay. PPD died while we were watching that up top. And Ace actually almost went down as well. Seems like this Crystal Maiden Slardar lane is putting on some serious pressure. So a bit of a... It looked like a little miscommunication there. But I mean, it still means that they just wasted completely the XM salve. He's to pop another one now too. So still more economic damage on this Death Prophet. But yeah, Peter dropping once more with the 1-1-1 the one, one, and one Crystal Maiden now. Both in kill score and skills. So helping out her other lanes with that aura. And uh, still able to help secure some plays with a Frostbite. As FY will secure a DD rune in the bottom lane. 
You're absolutely right about three. melee heroes versus Doom, though. FY has had no issues putting pressure on and making 33's life yeah. very difficult. You just, yeah, you just can't do anything. And like, that's the thing, because once again, 33's stuck in this situation where he can't take the Infernal Blade. And it, yep. it feels bad. But we wow. saw how that worked out in game one. He still recovered very well. Ended up being the most farmed hero in the game. And uh, this time, though, I love that they haven't committed, like, a Bane. Like, the super hard support that kills everyone. They, it's just a Pango. Like, this is great for a support Pango. What an impact he's had this, uh, this game. He has pushed the Doom out of these bounty runes. Definitely a victory. Doom is straight jungling right now. Five seconds till five-minute bounties come out. PPD thinking about a play with Soxa. But instead, they will just head back up to their high ground, and it will be three to one for the first round of bounties. Doom just trying to recover right now. Bada diving a bit here in the mid lane. Both of them having the raindrops and Soxa coming through. But uh, there is a rain observer where they just spotted Soxa. Up top, Ace going to be in some trouble again. Slardar has the bash right after the freeze. But a big rotation. Both supports on the way. Soxa with a toss into the tower. That will punish Chalice and secure a kill for NIP. Yeah, didn't respect the TP of the Tiny there. Like, they saw him rotating mid, so that's probably why they went aggressive, but just the, the quick turnaround there from Soxo. So, solid stuff being on the pulse for that one. But uh, it just means he's stuck up here a little bit, but him and Peter are actually going to start rotating mid. And DP's had to leave the mid lane because Fada hit six first. Yep, still a uh, little ways to go for XM. Nice ward down there, has a little bit of intel. Doom level four. He's returned to his lane. Ame is the real winner, though. Look at that net worth disparity. Yeah, he is way up there. Already up to 3,200 gold in net worth. And he is going straight for that Midas because he says, yeah, my game's free. He already got that Morbid Mask. This lets uh, Morphling just farm permanently. Never cares about creep damage. And then Slardar, conversely, he might... Actually, be going for it. I thought he was going to the treads, doom bottom. He's too. got phase boots queued up. Ooh, down bottom. Yep. Dive. FY going to fall first. They were so 33. close. To 3 He's going to live through this. Yeah, a little bit too greedy. And FY even going to be like, oh, hello, Ami. But uh, Ami knows. <laughs> this guy, he's a gold morphling. He's like, yeah, I can just walk through her. I'll be all right. I got it. You know, holds on to the Laguna. Good call there. And it missed the uh, initial setup on that. DP now level 6, though, and did actually pick up the Exorcism at level 6. Sometimes you'll see those extra points in Spirit Siphon instead. Ulti come out at like 8 or 9. 3-3? Three, three. Uh, <laughs> little AFK there. Getting punched by a panga. Up top, a small setup onto Slardar. Another toss into the tower. Ace was ready and waiting with the Searing Chains. And they should have the damage, I think. No, not quite. Slardar's just a little too fast. And with the slow from CM, those remnants didn't get there in time. Now Chalice able to TP out, and he will Damn. live. That's pretty costly. Losing your triple remnant to just a stupid Crystal Nova. Yep. That's uh, rather irritating. And even just level one, right? Like the 1-1-2 one, one, build here from X Nova. So just holding the lane. Not feeding and helping both of your or all your other heroes. And this Armada Fada catches the LSA here, though. Probably a dead Pango, and yes, indeed, Avalanche from Soxa secures the kill. Another great TP reaction. Three three just got level six down bottom. He mangoes. He pump fakes the doom. Yeah, he's forcing Ame to uh, morph strength here. Playing some mind games. Up top, Slardar, Bash, follow up crush onto Ace, but no Fata Crystal TP'd. Maiden. He's baiting and this. Yeah, instead there's three enemy heroes top, and they're going to try to push mid instead. Ace, dueling it out with Chalice, now the three on one. Caught by the chains means they missed the LSA, and he finds a little gap in the trees. He jukes the Lina, connects with the stun, and now Ame's here, morphs into Fada. Connects with a Dragon Slave, tanks a Laguna, and he gets destroyed. Fada. Oh no, don't die now. <laughs> now back towards mid. They're going to jump in onto the tiny Tango from behind the lines. XM with the Spirit Siphon still has the ultimate deployed. They will find a kill there, but more TPs on the way. 33 has the Doom off cooldown, but no mana. Will just try to chase down X Nova, but getting slowed into oblivion. This CM 
Maybe hard pressed to survive, but a pango inbound. She's looking for some help, but the neutrals won't be there. All right, well, that was an odd series of events, eh? Uh, so we had a DP ulti mid. Looks like they weren't able to secure the tower. Got down to about a fifth HP or so. And uh, oh, I, we can, I guess I can just look at the number and do the math. It was more like a quarter. But uh, mm -hmm. anyway, Chalice, man, those Jukes and Giants. I mean, they even had like that little Observer Ward, too, that was kind of helping out if he uh, went back down to the south. But the way he like hit himself in the tree line for that last crush was so sick. And then Ame just <laughs> shows up and feeds. A little disappointing, I'm sure, for the, the Slider who thought he was making big plays. Yeah, once again, a little setup onto Ace, but Fada, he knows what's going to happen here. Oh no, the Laguna, he... it's one second away. All right, he went back in. We're there good. you go. Okay. Easy kill. Bounty's coming out. Looks like it'll be three to one the other way with NIP securing the advantage. Now back in the bottom lane. 33 on the hunt. Does have a Doom here, but a little so, uh... more conservative. So they killed Sox at basically the same time, it seems, in the bottom. And FY yep. has his Tome flying out here, so he'll finally have level 6. As uh, Well, unfortunately, it's on the Courier with the Midas. So I think uh, we all know where that Courier is going first. Down to old Aw May. But uh, he has lost his lead in the net worth because of that death up top. Meanwhile, Fada 3 0 and one is uh, looking to catch up here. I mean, he's still holding it right now for the, the Morph, but it was a bigger gap before. And that Crystal Main just delayed a Midas Courier. That's a, a reportable offense there. Not acceptable gameplay. Well, it gets delivered nonetheless. Oh, oh. I missed the range creep. Oh my god. Farming on, tool on, secured. And they're going to smoke up with this Pango ulti. So they're really hoping not to run into Peter, but Peter had this ward down, so he's intentionally uh, popping that smoke there. And yeah, nice play by Peter. What's also interesting, the Slardar, right now he's just hanging on to casual gloves of haste and Blink Dagger queued up next. So not prioritizing a Midas, but definitely prioritizing just the raw attack speed, similar to what we saw the Lone Druid do in last game. Yeah, he's kind of making up for the fact that he went phase boots over treads as well. Definitely been seeing more treads on the Slardar as I've been watching. Kind of neat though that Midas has inspired this just like value gloves of haste meta. <laughs> yeah, it seems that way, doesn't it? We got another roll here through Peter. Looking for something a little more valuable, though, but not going to find it. So comes back for round two, and Ame will take the kill. 33 hiding in the trees. Actually didn't book it back to the tower, but they don't find him and seems he'll be safe. XM has rotated, deploys the exorcism, and they will just go to work on this tier one tower. He did manage to finish off that tier one mid. Death Prophet is just so gloriously brain dead, you know? This hero just, it makes your game plan so easy. Even if you don't kill the tower, like, this is just such low commitment. The only thing is this Doom True. play from 3-3. Hello! There it is. Chalice does get a stun on Ace as he TPs in. DP, I think, done for no matter what. Definitely with that next auto attack. They will get the chill on Chalice and Chalice in the back line. And 33 will end up bringing her down. So it's a good defense. They hold that tier one tower and get a couple of kills on top of it. Yeah, that was a little too brain dead, though. Uh, definitely got uh, some greed going there. Yep. Uh oh, Pango caught by PPD. He does not have a Fiend's Grip, though, uh, nor does he have any reinforcement. So just pushing him back, opening up for that tier one tower to go down. Ame trying to split push in the top lane, but I don't know if we'll be able to finish off this tower. Right, what's he at? 700 Lina. HP. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Appa. And this Not is why you pick Lena into Morph. Sorry, Ame. Three of NIP kind of playing around in the jungle here. They've got a good ward down. It's pretty decent intel about what's happening. Radiant have some of these uh, sentries down, so that illusion of security... NIP with the lead, Trent. Fada is really having a good game on this Lena. 4-0 and 2. Great rotation so far. Yeah, it feels like uh, the best games are the ones where Ame is just getting focused. It kind of felt the same way in game one, of course, with uh, all those dooms. But just, like, shutting him down in the early game as well. Slowing his uh, pace. There is still the opportunities for LGD to just bounce back into this game by getting the Roche. Because they have the Slider. And now Soxa. Oh, I'm going to roll back there. Hey there, Tiny. Done. F. FY finding that glorious spot. Yeah, uh, that's pretty nice. The perfect timing on each one. Makes the kill nice and simple. Dire structures are fortified. 
All right, I'm a tipping fodder. <laughs> like, yeah, you got me. See me next time. But was that the delayed tip? <laughs> I think so. I'd, it's the ping, you know. It, his tips still come from China, I guess. He's in Sweden, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's got to check his accounts back home. Make sure he's good for it. Makes sense. Yeah. Ace up top. Drum of endurance. Phase boots. No BOTs on this Ember, so a little bit limited in terms of where he can bounce around. Still very focused on that top lane, but farming pretty well. Number one for the Dire. Yeah, very nice uh, tight-knit group there, actually, between those Dire cores, eh? It's like 500 gold gap between the Doom and the Ember. Mm -hmm. The Fada just nestled in between, and after the Bounty runs, it will once again just be two for two. As we trade out... And FY on the support pango, gonna go for that nice casual javelin first and then probably right into the blink dagger after, but they're on the chalice. They found him all right. FY gonna try to break things up. Rolling Thunder hasn't connected yet. Ace unable to sidestep that, that way. And now on Ame the other has side. the morph, but he, whoop, he copied onto the ember, but then he didn't hit his slight and he just popped his bola. So definitely misplayed that one. On the run, NIP trying to get out of dodge. Chalice in hot pursuit, but no blink dagger. Level three guardian sprint will not be enough. Ame's uh, just just getting warmed up. You know this gold star morphling. He's got to figure it out. But uh, it's needs, a cold uh, day in Sweden. Yeah, I guess so. He needs to get going though, because like that should have just been an easy pickoff. At least one hero for sure. Uh, and then he just kind of flubs it. Still probably uh, glad he got that Midas, though. And going back for that Lincoln's build, we talked about this yesterday. Relatively rare this day and age to see Morphling's itemized so defensively like that. But this game, it seems worth it. Lena has been such an yes, issue. Doom's definitely. gonna continue to be a problem. Uh, this is a, like, no-brainer uh, Lincoln's game, right? Bane, yeah. Doom, Lena. Yeah. Don't really have a choice, it feels like. And especially with the Midas, it feels a little less scary to farm it, but we'll see initiation. Slardar tanks the Laguna Blade. Not really that close to even going down. He's still in pursuit. They want PPD. Turns for Brain Sap, and it will be the end of him. NIP, though, they turn, and they bring down Chalice. PPD uses the buyback. TPs into that tier one that's still standing. X Nova stuck in the trees, but uses it for an opportunity to get off a decent ultimate. The Avalanche just barely falls short. They have an idea of where he is. They've found him, but can they actually kill him? Yeah, Fada did the triangulation there on the Light Strike Array. Didn't matter, though. They'll have to get out. So they, they do lose Chalice, but at least it cost them a buyback on the Bane. So it actually still ends up being a net worth gain there for the Radiant. But uh, in the end, they, they're trying to get a Blink Dagger on Chalice. So I'd, I'd kind of say that was uh, more favored to the side of NIP, especially if they keep this aggression going right onto FY. It's like another great pick. Ace gets credit for that one. That's pretty much uh, Maelstrom gold there. Radiance middle tower is under attack. And I wondered if FY would go for the blink dagger, but let's say he's going for uh, a mech, or at least that's what he's currently Radiant got queued up just to fortified. help the squad here. I guess they are already fairly mobile. I feel like I'd rather a blinker or a Yules, personally. I'm not sure if he's going to get to the mech or have the mana for it. I guess with a CM and if he takes the mana region talent, it'll work out. Yeah. Speaking of CM, caught by a nightmare. Another ward game has been very good from NIP across these games. And yeah, they, they know that there's an observer up there because obviously they have their ward first. They get the sentry and the observer. Now they're going to counter sentry up top, but they get it instantly. Ace on it with that, uh, that quelling blade. That is a lot of lost gold. They just lost an observer and two sentries there and NIP retain the vision. And even if this goes down, they have a backup ward down on the low ground. And X Nova died. And X Nova. Ah, he's, he's all secondary, you know. <laughs> so they're gonna. Oh, they're doing double Shadow Blade? So they're Shadow Blade Doom? on Doom, Blink Dagger on Tiny. Yeah, Lena's going for one too, though. Okay. At least has it queued up. Hasn't made a commitment yet. I think it's just like, but what else can you get on Lena? Like, Radiant <laughs> I feel like you kind of need it. Mm, yeah. yeah. Just feels kind of awkward, obviously, like investing so much into Invis, but. See if it works out for them. Ame sitting much higher HP than he had in the past. And they're going to drop another ward down on the low ground. Peter uh, predicting that they're going to come and sentry this high ground. So while he's here, he's going to put a deeper ward down. 
No, just solid support play. Whenever your, one of your wards is given away like that, if you can find a, a little backup one in the, the nearby vicinity, it's always a good play. Mm -hmm. Chalice. You can also do that in uh, lower tier games with sentries. Like, you just put a sentry up top there, baiting them into what? thinking that you He's put an He's ulting op. to D ward. <laughs> and ulting right into he the hands of Peter Pan Dam. Chalice, though, he jumps in. I don't know if they actually want to commit to this. PSG LGD do catch the Tiny off on the other side. DP with Exorcism deployed. Looks like they'll find Fada as well. It's a Dude, great a reaction, and they go two for one. I mean, the baits are there. This guy rolls in, plants, plants a center. He bought tangos just to tango the ward on the high crowd while he's still ulting, and somehow NIV lose two heroes. He's, he's too good. Clearly, he is the Pango King. He has been upgraded. <laughs> that that puts a, a whole other definition on uh, warding meta right there, I think. Yeah, this is the, the very next level. It's like the drive-by D ward. Oh, man. Oh, he went for the attack speed over the morph duration. Ame <laughs> loved a couple of those, uh, the sleight of fist, and he's like, yeah, no, I'm good. I think I'll just play morph this game. I mean, That's... you mentioned in the draft that Ember is really the one that you would want to morph into in this situation. If you're not prepared, is there, is there a secondary target that he would want to take? I guess well, I wonder if he was considering any of his allies, like the secondary silence, the swashbuckle from Pango. Like, there's some pretty good tools from his, like, even a second um, crush, crush and yeah. like guardian sprint and stuff. But if you don't take the duration, I don't think you're taking the copy allies. Yep. Chalice There's, gets uh, caught in the mid. NIP all even. grouped up as four. Everyone but Doom able to make that kill happen. And what's that other talent? Waveform attacks targets? Yeah. So, okay. This helps you farm a little faster. Not too bad. Tier 2 mid taking a lot of damage. Bada with that Shadow Blade complete now. BKB queued up next. They will leave the tower standing, but... Killable and one more push down bottom. This tier one denied by Ace. Perfectly done. That is interesting though that Ame plays it like this because I feel like all the best morphs I've seen are morphs that abuse the ultimate the most. Like attribute shift, of course, is an amazing skill and everything, and I feel like that's what Ame is. Just like you know, that's why he plays morph. Uh -oh. He does stuff like this, gets that grip. But like they go for the grip, but he got the strength off. And going on to PPD. Sleep is there. Ooh, Yule nice Scepter, Yules. fast Fada. reactions from Fada. Talk about counter initiation. Yeah, and uh, they'll check for the top room, but it won't be there. Oh, Chalice, he's zooming! <laughs> it's Slarder in the river, man. He wanted to go down for that uh, rune, but Radiant's they were coming. It wasn't that valuable. And now they're going to head into the Roche pit here, popping the ulti preemptively, and XM just straight up blanks it. I mean, they Alrighty. can kill this very quickly, even if NIP know about it, and it seems they do. Sox is going to walk over. He throws the branch, goes, guys, Roche is dead. Uh, yep, I think we let that go. Okay, secured. Ame with an Aegis. Now in the mid, a little lag spike there, but Bane gets caught. He'll be the first to go down. Lina with a Laguna Blade on the Slardar. Follow-up is enough from Soxa, but they are going to pay dearly for this. Soxa falls, fought us shortly after. A one for three, a double for the DP. PSG getting everything they want out of this, and even more, Ame jumps forward. He morphs the Ember Spirit and sets up a triple kill for the Death Prophet. I feel like Chalice is just getting gutted in all of these fights but it doesn't even matter like he's one six and five but he's actually having such an impact he just gets a blink crush and then every time fada uses his full arsenal on him and so the dp and the the morphlings show up and they just clean up what's left i think that situation was so good for lgd because they got double value out of the dp ult. they would have been yeah, happy true. just to get roche and back away wait for another cooldown they got to take a team fight with it on top of getting roche and uh, in stark contrast to game one, 3-3, three, three, not having an impact here on the Doom. Uh, I don't think he was nearby enough for that fight. He bought this Shadow Blade and hasn't been able to make an aggressive play with it quite yet. So I think uh, we're going to need a little bit more out of him for this one. And he's going to have to find himself a way to uh, get through this Lincoln Sphere as well. Do you think the BKB is the right next choice for him? I mean, I guess once you go Shadow Blade, Blink Dagger is sort of out of the equation. Uh, no, I think BKB is the right call. Like, he just needs it so he can play around the uh, the Pango and the Slardar. Okay. 
I guess the Morphling is the ideal Doom target unless you can catch the DP, but even catching the DP can be a double-edged sword. If you Doom her before ult, she dies and then has buyback. You're out your cooldown, she's back in the fight with her ultimate, and then that's where the turn comes. Yeah, that's true. Not gonna happen every time, but it's sort of like that Spectre Syndrome. If he's got buyback haunt, you could be in trouble. Try and go for a crush there onto uh, Ace, but he manages to get back. And they're gonna start pushing into this tower. Aegis on Ame. I highly doubt they're gonna need the Exorcism. I think they're gonna try and save it for a tier 3 push here, because they're very well suited for it. Counter pressure on the side lanes is just a tiny. Peter's hoping they're going to make a rotation. He's going to try. Actually, he doesn't even have wards right now, so he's just purely uh, scouting with the body here. But you can see this tower's going out quick. They have brought back FY, though, so this says that they want to take this. So yeah, back comes LGD. They're looking for a fight. They might get both supports here if they see Peter. Tiny gets obliterated. PPD with a quick TP Ooh. out. X Nova, not quite in time. Oh, that's a good trade for LGD. They get the tier 2 bottom, defend their tier 2 top, and get a support pick on top. Are they close to something? I mean, I guess BKB for Chalice, that's still pretty far away. The mech is somewhat close for FY. I'm trying to remember, like, just figure out why they went back. Okay, they want the uh, BKB for the DP. That's why. XM's sitting on 3200 just raw gold right now, so... Because that looked like a pretty prime position to go high ground and try and just take this tier 3 with a single ulti, and you'd still have time. Uh, for a second Morph ulti with the agent. Also waiting on the Manta. Yeah, true. But uh, obviously this is fine too. You're happy if you're able to uh, take care of these buildings. Yeah, exactly. with an Aegis. You see a tier one standing up top. It's like, guys, if we can defend our tier two and then get three towers out of this trade after killing the tiny, I think that's better than rolling the dice on doing damage on a tier three. I think the thing is though that like, you hear a lot of top teams talk about this where like, sometimes you see like, secret smoke and you've got someone who's 100 gold away from a bkb and you're just like what the hell are they doing right now but you know if you just feel strong sometimes you just have to go with that because now because they missed that opportunity that's two 10 second bkbs that just came out for both the ember and the doom so although you're waiting for items like these are some very uh big items for the team fight of nip it's a good point always pointing out that opportunity cost anytime you're waiting to get something yourself you're giving space for the enemy to also get something for themselves. So it's a, a point well taken. The mech, though, has been picked up. The smoke from LGD. Will this work? Saxa with great positioning oh, on the high pops. ground, but they don't really have the vision to capitalize on this broken smoke. And LGD will actually get a small stroke of luck, and instead of walking into a potential trap, they'll break one smoke and just head back mid and look for another angle. I think they still have the numbers on it, though, honestly. They see Ace... How fast can they do this damage? Oh, they got him with the crush, the follow-up bash, but they need more, not there in time. Hard to do that with a blink on the pango or some sort of secondary initiation. And like so, you said, BKB up on Ember, so they've got to have a pretty flawless chain of crowd controls to get that kill. They have the BKB now on the Lena 2 and the BKB on the Death Prophet and the Mech done on the pango. Everyone's getting their items right now. Next fight is going to be huge. I mean, it's less than a 1k net worth lead for LGD, so NIP still very much in this game. Next fight will be huge in terms of momentum. We'll see that Roche timer in about two and a half minutes, so depending on when this skirmish breaks out, Roche could be in the equation. Smoke up now from NIP out of their base. 3-3's been uh, heavily favoring the Frost Armor at this game. You can see he's, again, spamming it out here, just trying to cover Fada and Ace during all their excursions. Smart. Yeah. Eight armor. The only thing is that he doesn't have a way to pop Lincoln, so he's reliant on Peter probably trying to do it with the Enfeeble. It's generally considered like one of the best skills in the game for popping Lincoln just because of the raid, the range it has and the relative, you know, I mean, obviously it's not as useless as it used to be. Um, it's clearly a lot better, but it's still really good at popping Lincolns. Right. It's compared to everything else, it's still pretty low on the totem pole. Yeah. Things quieting down a little bit, though. Both sides realizing what's at stake here in Game 3. Being very cautious, kind of hoping oh, the, the enemy dude, will the be the greed. ones to make a mistake. He, he went for the Enfeeble on the Slardar over the Grip. I mean, maybe he just felt it wasn't worth it, but they had a ward down um, in the lane that's now been dewarded. But it's like, it's level 1. I don't know. He must have just wanted to scare the, the Slardar. But it would have been a pretty good pick for them, honestly. I don't think they were there to uh, retaliate. Look at FY's positioning. 
Yeah, but when you have limited vision, it's a little scary. You see a Slardar pop out, and you're always wondering, does he have friends? Is this going to be bait? Yeah, it did look uh, kind of baity there, for sure. Both teams playing the footsies right now. And uh, obviously, they lost all their outer towers, but the fact that they held high ground against that Aegis is pretty go. good. There we go. FY, he charges in first. It's a good silence on two to force out the BKBs pretty early, but Slardar gets completely countered as such. It's not the way LGD wanted to start this fight, and they're going to try to back out, but Chalice buys back. Maybe they can reset. Mech used by Pangolier. Now he gets brought down. XM with the Exorcism on, as well as the BKB, trying to do what damage he can. Now it's NIP that are in retreat. They're just invising out, though. Like, Peter's going to die, but Doom popped the Shadow Blade. Lena popped the Shadow Blade, and they, they just got out, even with the... Uh... The haze on Lena, so that buyback from the Slardar, obviously it was good, right? Because they forced the BKBs, but then Slardar jumps in after BKBs, which is a bit of a whiff. And then he buys back, and then they just run. Like, all right, good stuff. Ooh, Tiny gonna get caught though. Doxa left all alone here. Not so good. Gonna be a freebie. He did get both bounties though. I mean, give him that at least. Bottom, I'm A. They've got uh, the double Shadow Blades. They break the Lincolns, and they should have plenty of damage here. Actually, no mana for the Laguna, but right clicks will be more than sufficient. With the, that is the benefit of the double Shadow Blade right there. You can yeah, just walk true. up on the carry and say, hey, you're dead. Yep. No chance to react there. Didn't even get off his uh, shift that he's been so good at. And we have ourselves a very quick Roche. It's actually going to be back up before Ame is. 20 seconds. Uh, but what abilities do we have to scout is the question, and uh, even the overall speed from NIP is pretty damn slow still for Roche. PKB. Shadow Blade Gaming. Yeah, it's uh, on the way for Chalice. It's still, you know, 1,300 gold away, but he kind of needs that too, so he can at least have an impact while the enemies have BKB. He can still just keep on uh, trying to hit them with the Bash of the Deep. And getting up in their faces. They're going to go for the gem, too. They haven't been beat in the vision game. And then, of course, these double shadow blades. So I like this uh, pickup here from FY. It, it is going to delay that blink dagger even further. Um, it also means he can't go right for the greaves or something. But it does mean they can now go for the five man and try and protect Ame when he's up, as well as go for the Roche. They even scan just to make sure that NIP are not in there at the moment. So they don't have a great idea as to where they're currently playing. Mjolnir up on the Ember Spirit. Starting to get to that point where he's a pretty scary damage dealer. Pango, so the D Warder. Yeah, they see 3-3. Three, three. They got a good vision up here as well. And they're just sending in X Nova. A tool to teach. Maybe hoping they'll make the jump here, but uh, they're, of course, long gone at this point. Things going to reset a little bit, and back to farming we go. DP now working on a Lincoln's of her own. Going to be Shadow Blade Gaming versus Lincoln's Gaming. BKB also not far off for Slardar. Just working on that recipe about halfway. Yeah, XM has the cast range. I wonder if he might go for the, the scythe first, honestly. I'm not sure if he'll finish his Lincolns. The rune of invisibility. Ace is invis up here, but the gem is not in the area. He's going to initiate and jump back. Teases Easy. out the bots there from Fada. Satanic also up on the Morphling. A little more status oh, resist. A... Yeah, that's a big one. Interesting kit of items. Good mix of survivability, I think. He's sitting at 7 strength right now with the, the plus 55 from his itemization. Very tight game. I mean, NIP with a small gold lead, but still feels like anyone's game, potentially based on uh, this next big fight. Roshan is up. That's Aegis Cheese. And a couple of fresh items. The BKB on Slardar. But the yeah, Aghanim on Scepter on Doom. That's a, that's a bold move, man. Potential double Lincolns and still going for the eggs. Confidence. Once again into the Roche pit, falling very quickly. This worked very well for LGD last time. And I in the neighborhood, terrible, eerily similar to last time. Soxa with the tree throw. They're nearby, still the exorcism on. NIP trying to get out, but some of them are going to get left behind. PPD caught in the trees. BKB from Fada stops the crush, but Chalice wants to pursue. They only get one, but it's just like last time. LGD get the objective.
This is one of those games where, like, all your Dota IQ and all the games you've ever played of Dota say, Hello, we know that they are in the Roche Pit. We should fight them in the Roche Pit. But their heroes are absolute trash at fighting them in the Roche Pit in comparison to the LGD ones. Like, there is no way that you're going to win a fight in there. Like, what is? they don't have any AoE initiation. The, the best thing they'd have would be, like, a Blink Avalanche. And that is just, you know, not the same ability that it used to be. Mm-hmm. It's it's not that maybe like if Doom had a blink and a hoof stomp or something, but you compare that to things like the Pango ulti, the DP ulti, the crush. They, they even just a, a crush like AOE a CM silence. ulti. But yeah, exactly. Like everything just favors LGD in that scenario. It's so hard for them to get a hold of that rush. And then the other problem was that even when they had mass control and they were getting picks, they, they don't have the vision heroes to keep track over the rush bit the whole time, and they also just don't have any way to really do the rush that quick. So this, this Roche is really causing problems for NIP this game. Because it just makes every fight so difficult. 33, gonna get caught looking at bounty runes here. They've got Dust, he forces out his BKB, but Slardar had a bash of the deep. Maybe he can grab another one. Corrosive Haze to squish him up even more. And this BKB Doombringer will be out of options. Finished off as he tries to make it into the fog. Nice pickup for PSG LGD. Yeah, they saw Soxa on the run here, so they know that he's actually coming for this creep wave. Uh, he skipped over that ward that was down there. And so Xnova is lurking. He, he wants this. He's like, yo, guys, come on. Can we kill this guy? But they're chasing Ace in the mid lane instead. He still has BKB, so he should not die. Oh. Uh, that's uh, not Well, glad right. you caught that. Uh, bottom lane, though. Soxa had a tip. Well, he does have buyback. Oh, Sox uh, in there, dude. He's Nova. going. Sox He's going to get caught here, but I think X Nova might have this. Let it go. Freezing under the tower. More tower shots. CM, do you have the damage here? He's going to have cooldowns up soon. And he's just going to TP out. Okay, so enough of that song and dance mid lane. Barracks are being taken. Buyback used by the Ember Spirit. PSG LGD doing crippling damage here. Bottom tier three down. Exorcism still with about a third duration, but DP oh, almost cheese. popped. No, the cheese. She survives. Now Soxa falls. Ame on a killing spree, and they're hungry for more. They're going to bring this Doombringer down low, but 33 with the BKB will survive. Barracks also still standing, but this Pango jumps in for more. Fada BKB has to head back, and now the damage. PPD gets blown up. 33 going to get brought down as Ame gets turned into Tiny. Buyback's being used if they've got him, but it's a triple kill for the Morphling. Yes, the Slardar falls. They're running low on resources, and I think so many LGD buybacks, will though. start to sound the retreat. Maybe not. Trying to focus the Barracks. X Nova gets pulled back in. BKB used by Ace. I don't think they're going to be able to finish off this lane. He still has Satanic. As well as the Aegis. This is one of the strangest ways I've seen a game go. Ame might still be okay here. Even without the Aegis, they're struggling to kill him. It's a three-hero silence. They might turn and actually fight this. He's got another morph. He's turned into the Ember Spirit now. Soxa doing everything he can. Lina finally catches him with an LSA. No mana for Laguna. That probably could have been the Aegis right there. But they're just so low on resources, they can't make it happen. They clip him with another stun. Finally, the Aegis gets used. TP Fata out for Fodder right away. He knows. These two... Okay, it's three, actually. XM still nearby, just trying to drop silences. Fada rejoining oh. the party. He's got the ultimate now. They should finally be able to finish off this Ame. Laguna should do it if they can get him within threshold. Still 1,500 HP. They break the Lincolns again. Waveform once more. This guy is unkillable. Where are his damn teammates? They're on their way back in. It's FY. He's rejoining this party. He's trying to roll, but he gets tossed up. Doom now used on Ame, and they'll finish him off. Finally, the raid boss has fallen, but he didn't drop any loot. FY trying to make it away and the rolling thunder should be sufficient nip have to work for it but they finally get the high prized kill oh my God. what a play from fauna the tp out during a just goes home bottles up with the socks of bottle and then comes back into the game uh to help get the kill onto the morph leg all right so what happened uh we had a an ember feed in the mid which forces him to have to buy back. We had a tiny CM solo dueling inside the Radiant base while the Dire were losing their mid lane of Rax. Uh, somehow, Morphling and Death Prophet managed to survive against four heroes for the longest time. And in the end, we have a still 1k, 2k lead here for LGD, but of course that will continue to grow with them missing the mid lane. Uh, how much of our game has changed at this point? I guess we're, we're just still in a lot of the same scenarios of like... 
It's all on 3-3 to get this big Doom. He now does have the Purge, so he at least has a way to pop the Lincoln Sphere. Yeah, the only difference is some more item progression. Uh, Shiva's out on Fada. He's also got BOTs now. Lotus Orb on Tiny, but the big one, BKB up on Ame. So this Morphling is now basically unkillable. I mean, we just saw how hard it is for them to shut him down. Now he's got magic immunity. This is, this is a big one. So it's all on the Doom, basically. Like, he 3-3 three, three has to Doom him and then just not die. Which, yeah, um, so. of course, Fada also picked up a Shiva's guard as they were killing Ame. He grabbed it from the uh, the secret shop, so that should help with his mana problems at least a little bit for this Laguna Blade, because that has definitely been an issue this game. So there's been yeah, like three or right. four of those that he's missed. 680 at level three. You look at his items, it is a relatively small pool. All right, it's game time. It's 40 minute bounty rune, so LGD are smoking up. They're heading in. A haste rune. They want to come down for that? Nope. They do not dare. BKB used by Chalice. Maybe a little early, but allows the setup onto Bane. The rest of NIP just trying to get out. The Delta split seems pretty effective. Down bottom, they should make it back. Bane does not have a buyback, though. Out of the game yep. for 60 seconds. This could be an opening for LGD to go for the bottom lane of Barracks, after all. They're going to know that was one of the uh, buyback heroes there. From NIP. And it uh, goes for the 30% life seal now on the Slardar. This game might not make it till nighttime, so I can't really blame him. Oh, 33 gets caught. He tried to cut the creep wave, went for the TP, but Slardar got him just in time. And now Doom is going to pay for this. He tried to Shadow Blade away, but they've got detection. And Ame is still playing very aggressively here. Has the Ember form. Looking to tease them a little bit here. So he again just pops Ebola. Does he play Ember? <laughs> so they know how this hero works. Demons. Bye back now from the Doom. <laughs> DP on the high ground. Chunking away at the barracks. Like you said before, the, the mindlessness of Death Prophet. So easy for PSG LGD to siege this with pretty low risk. You know, they're just saying, hey guys, jump on the DP. Just go for it. See how that works out for you. BKB popped by Chalice Ame as well as they jump in. Fada, Magic Immune joining the party, but the barracks get destroyed by the Ghosties. I think yeah. LGD will just back out this time. Not yeah. going to linger around. That gave them all buyback. Slider's just ticking into it, but they, they needed that Rax Gold for the Morphling. Oh, FY, there's a wall there. Uh -oh, oh, another oh, one. Oh. Nope, all right. okay. The fingers you miss all the shots sweaty you don't take. right now. Looks like they're closing out the game. They're going to back themselves out. Uh. <laughs> this, is, this is a hell of a game, I got to say. I always feel bad poking fun at Pango players when they get caught like that because I know it, it looks so easy from our perspective and sometimes yeah, you just yeah. misjudge it like a little tiny bit and it looks so ridiculous. Or it's like he doesn't want to jump down because suddenly it doesn't look so good so he just bounces away. Well, XM, ooh, ooh what a blink. Jeez. Spidey senses are tingling, and now he is on the run, clipped by the Shivas, but they're going to turn on Delina. She gets silenced, slowed down by the Spirit Siphon. BKB on for DP. XM in the front lines here. 33 also with a BKB on, kind of rejoining the fray. Very spread out fight now for NIP, and I don't think it's working in their favor. They've lost one, soon to be two. Nowhere for PPD to go, and the rest do head back to the base, but two down, neither of them with buybacks and once again. Seems like LGD are getting that much closer to closing this one out, especially with a Scythe of Vice now secured on the Death Prophet. Yeah, and they should be able to get the next Aegis without a problem whatsoever because the Doom is dead for 80 seconds. The question is, do they want to wait that long? It looks like they will. I mean, Ame's just hitting up some Ancients at the moment, so likely we'll be uh, getting the, uh, the Refresher Shard out here soon. Socks are just trying to cut waves. Same thing from Ace and NIP. Last legs here. I don't know. It feels like they just don't have the damage. Yeah. Like this Ember, the, the Mjolnir, and the Radiance, all this magic damage does not feel like enough. A lot of damage out onto the DP, but not enough for a kill. 3,200 hit points. She is not an easy target. Now there's no Laguna Blade for 40. They're going to dive past the Tier 3s into the Tier 4s. The Ember Spirit gets brought down by Ame. Tiny going to follow suit, and NIP pushed back to the well. There it is, as the good game is called. LGD take the first series of the day here in group number B2. Jesus. Group letter B, 2-1. Wow. Pretty dominant performance game one. I don't, it felt like NIP, like even if they were a little bit down there, 3-3 just able to get those perfect dooms off on the troll. 
Took a nice victory, and uh, game two, though, was all LGD, thanks to that Naga, and game three kind of felt the same way. Although I said game one, it felt like the inevitable victory would go to LGD, and it eventually didn't. Um, this game, maybe it felt a little more certain. Oof.